Hello, this is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to identify key signatures. This is a subject where sometimes beginning students either forget about or they don't understand, and it can be quite tricky to identify these key signatures so that you can play your instrument or sing in the right key. I'm going to be breaking this topic into two different videos. This first video right here today is going to be presenting how to identify flat key signatures, and then I'm going to be presenting another video on how to identify sharp key signatures. Please enjoy this video. So first, let's start off talking about what is a key signature. The key signature comes right after the clef sign, and that's what I have here. I have a treble clef and I have a bass clef. This is uh, what a pianist would read because it's a grand staff. If you're a flute player or a violinist or a trumpet player, you would read treble clef all by itself. And if you're a cello player or a trombone player or a bass player, you would read bass clef. There are other clefs, just note that, and I have a couple of videos on how to identify the letter names of those clefs. But right after the clef sign is the key signature. And then uh, after the key signature, notice there's nothing in that area, and I'll talk about that in just a second, what is that key signature called that doesn't have anything in it, is the time signature. Okay, so in between the clef signs and the time signature, is the key signature. Now there's nothing here right now and that's because there is a key signature that doesn't have anything in it and it's called the natural key or the key of C. But I prefer my students to use the key of C. So just try to note that as we begin this journey with key signatures that uh, first we're going to be starting off with flat key signatures and then I'm going to have a whole separate video on sharp key signatures. But the key signature that doesn't have any sharps or flats is the key of C. So as a refresher or to remind people, um, just note that what you're going to be finding inside of the key signature is either a sharp or a series of sharps or a flat or a series of flats or nothing as you saw in the key of C. There is a particular order of these sharps and flats and I'm just you even though I'm spending most of the time on flats in this particular video I'm going to share with you the order of the sharps just so that you can start memorizing that for the next video but the order of the sharps would be F C G D A E B or I use the mnemonic device fat cats get drowsy after eating birds and um, the flats also have a certain order when they're placed on the musical staff. So they would follow B, E, A, D, greatest common factor, or G, C, F. And um, what you should note about this is they'll always be in this order on the staff. Uh, so, and it doesn't matter which uh, clef sign that you're using, uh, you can identify these in any clef sign just by knowing this series and order of either the flats or sharps. Now another thing, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, is look at the relationship between the sharps and flats in this particular order as you see here. You notice that um, they are reverse of one another and it creates the circle of fifths and I'll have a whole nother video to talk about that a little bit later. Um, I know that some people will get a little technical with me in uh, analyzing a piece of music, but this is uh, supposed to be a tutorial for beginning musicians, and uh, it's not supposed to be a tutorial to really go deep and analyze uh, certain key areas. So um, stay tuned for other videos on that. Now, I do want to also say something. The musical alphabet will also be used and uh, if you need to know how to identify um, the different you know names of the notes in either treble clef or bass clef uh, go back and look at my playlist for a video on how to identify notes in treble clef or bass clef 
the names of the notes or the names of the letters that we use for the musical alphabet just as a refresher because we will be using that and that's separate from this and a lot of people get that confused uh, with the musical alphabet. The musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then it cycles over again A, B, C, D, E, F, G and so we have a whole series of notes that are in sequence um, up and down, uh, you know, from low to high using the musical alphabet. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video. So now we have our staff here and you notice before there was nothing there. That was the key of C. And now we have one flat here and it's on the third line in treble clef and on the second line in bass clef. And this is B flat. But you would not say, or some of my students think it is, the name of the key signature just because it's there. No, it's not the key signature of B-flat just because B-flat is sitting there on the staff. No, there's a way to find out the name of the key signature. And in this case, uh, what you would do is you would go back four letter names in the musical alphabet. Remember that the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if we were to go back four letter names in the musical alphabet from B, we would say B, A, G, and F. And that's F is four letter names away or backwards from B. And that's how we get the name of this particular key signature. This is the key of F. So now let's look at the second example. You notice that there are two bars here and that means that the key signature has changed to a different key signature. So you may actually see that in a piece of music where it goes from one key signature to another key signature in a piece of music that you may be reading. Now we have two flats in this particular key signature here. And so the names of the flats Remember, our order are B flat and E flat. So there are two different ways of figuring out the name of a flat key signature with two or more flats. And the first way is to do what you did in the last example. And if we were to do that using the musical alphabet and going back four letter names, if we were to go back from E, D, C, and then B, Okay, that would identify the key signature. So you can go back four letter names or there is a shortcut. You can look at the second to the last flat or in this case, it is B flat and that is the name of this key signature. So remember, there are two different ways of identifying a flat key signature. You can either go back four letter names from the last flat, which is the flat farthest to the right and find your name of your key signature or you can look simply at the second to the last flat, which in this case is B flat, and you have the name of your key signature. So when looking at this example, some people may also ask the question, well, why is this not the key of B? Why is it called the key of B flat? And that's because when the actual key signature contains that letter, you would say that this is the key of B flat. So keep that in mind when we're looking at other key signatures for flats, but also the sharp key signatures in the next video. And the next example will also demonstrate that as well, that you're going to also say that the name of the key signature is flat because you're going to find that letter uh, or pitch inside of the key signature. So now let's take a look at this key signature uh, and it's the same process. You take this last flat here and it is F flat and you go back four letter names. So F, E, D, C. It's not only C, it is C flat because C flat is in the key signature. And the second way to figure out the name of this key signature is to look at the second to the last flat and uh, that's the second flat from the right of all of these flats. 
This is the piano version of the Marriage of Figaro, or the aria from it, composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You notice that we have our clef sign right there at the beginning. We have our flats, which that is our key signature. And then we have the C here, and that's our time signature. The C stands for common time, and it is equivalent to 4-4 time. But we're really focusing on identifying or naming our key signature. We have three flats, so if we have three flats, we're going to follow the specific order of our flats. This is B, E, and A. And now we're going to uh, see, well, how do we identify this key signature with three flats? We take the last flat, which is the flat farthest to the right. We go back four letter names, so that would be A, G, F, and E flat. And you notice we're saying E flat for this particular key signature, not just regular E, because the flat is actually in the key signature. And the shortcut of finding out or identifying the key signature is to look at the second to the last flat, which is right there. It is E flat. So you may ask, well, what's the purpose of having a key signature? Well, the key signature makes it so that you don't have to put flats next to every single one of these Bs. And it's just easier to know, well, what's flat or what's sharp in the entire piece of music at the beginning of it before you play it. So that way you don't have to, you know, have all of those reminders all over the place. And it also makes the page look quite a, kind of weird there when you have them there. So instead of having the flat next to the B flat, which is the first note of the piece, and then over here and over here, they're putting that in the key signature. And these flats, or the key signature, whatever's there, flat or sharp, stays in effect for the entire piece of music that you may have. This is a great example of a single uh, stabbed instrument like a trumpet or a flute reading a piece of music in context and actually having a key signature change. Uh, I'm going to share more of the details of this particular piece of music in my next video when I talk about sharps. But you see at the top of the staff or at the top of the piece of paper of the music that uh, it starts off the piece with one sharp and then it kind of modulates or it changes there. It's hinting at a different tonal area and then all of a sudden at measure 40 it goes to a flat key signature. Uh, and you see those double bar lines mean that something is going to change. It changed, and now you have a different key signature for the rest of the piece of music or until it changes uh, to a different key signature. In this case, it just stays in effect for the rest of the piece of music. In some music, it does change back and forth between two different key signatures or more, and uh, that adds more complexity to the piece of music. Let's look at this key signature here. You notice it has two flats, B flat and E flat. If we were to identify this key signature with two flats right here, we would look at the flat which is farthest to the right, which is E flat, and we would go back four letter names, and it would be the key of B flat. Or we can just simply look at the second to the last flat. So it would be in the key of B flat, for the rest of this piece of music. This is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video on how to identify key signatures. Look out for my next video. I'm going to be presenting how to identify sharp key signatures. And please look out for my other videos that are on how to read and write music and basic music theory. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have an amazing day. Thank you.